yeah, anytime. Okay, so thank you everybody for tuning in and for our virtual seminar on quantum gravity and information. And this time we're very happy to have Tadashi Takayanagi from the Yukawa Institute for Theoretical Physics, who is going to tell us about looking at shadows of entanglement wedges. So please, Tadashi, take it away. Ah, thank you so much. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the organizers for this virtual seminar in Potsdam and Amsterdam. I'm very happy to give a virtual seminar. So today, I'd like to talk about our recent works on the CFT counterpart of entanglement wedges, which we call CFT wedges, which we'll, I, I'll explain later. And based on these two papers, first one is our a kind of later version, and uh, we're going to post uh, probably within this month a longer version, which has a more examples and more detailed analysis. And this is based on the collaboration with Yuya Kusuki and the Kodi Umemoto, they are graduate students here, and also Yuki Suzuki, who is an undergraduate student in our university. Okay, so let me start. So before I go to the uh, main topic, but I just will briefly mention what, um, uh, what the, our claim is, very briefly. So in the end, I want to explain that uh, the CFT weight, we, we want to introduce the concept of CFT weight, which is purely defined in conformal field theory and based on the uh, quantity so-called information metric, which we use something, for example, called breast metric. And this wedge is only, wedges are only exist clearly in holographic CFTs. We can define similar ideas, but it's a bit ambiguous in generic CFTs. And only if we think about holographic CFT, we have wedges. So this is the CFT wedges. But actually, this CFT wedges uh, turns out to be just uh, uh, shadows of entanglement wedge, which we expect the ADS CFT. So entanglement wedge can be uh, kind of probed by just purely by using conformal field theory by using this CFT wedges. And also, I'd like to uh, suggest that uh, as a, in the middle of this computation, we encounter the quantity called the breast metric in conformal field theory. And uh, actually, this turns out to be closely related to just the bulk space time metric, ADS metric, actually on a time slice. Actually, they are proportional to each other. I will go to explain. OK, so this is our main claim of this talk. And uh, let me begin with the introduction. So the one of the basic mechanism on how ADS CFT works is, is as entanglement wedge or entanglement wedge reconstruction or sub-region, sub-region duality. And this is the following question. So basic question is that, as you know, right, is which bulk region is dual to a given region A in conformal field theory? So this is entanglement wedge. Uh, which we, in this talk, I write this uh, MA. A is a subsystem in conformal field theory, and it's dual in gravity is entanglement wedge. We write it MA. So this is a heuristic picture, which we now often encounter. So this is a, a time slice of anti doshita space, and this is a subsystem A is here. And we have some minimal surface, which corresponds to the entanglement entropy for A. And the region which surrounded by this A and the gamma A is called this MA, is entanglement wedge. So the correspondence is here like this. We have reduced density matrix for region A in conformal field theory. And this is dual to reduced density matrix in anti-doshita space, ADS graph, as established by many works. And so, but this is a kind of a static version of entanglement wedge. Actually, there is a more covariant definition. This really looks like wedge, like this. So we are focused on time slice. But actually, this MA is here. But actually, more precisely, this entanglement wedge is defined by the domain of dependence of this region, MA. And our argument, but however, our argument below actually mostly assumes static space time. So this, we don't need to think about this kind of covariant version. Actually, we just stick with this previous this static version. But actually, it is possible to extend our argument to uh, more general non-static setups in the covariant way. Okay, so and the, so this is a simplest example of uh, entanglement wedge and but a uh, more non-trivial example is con the case where the subsystem consists of two disjoint or uh, multiple disjoint regions. So in this case of two disjoint region A and B 
and we are talking about entanglement entropy for A, uh, entanglement wedge for AB, A union B. So when A and B are well separated, for this case, entanglement entropy for A is computed by this surface, and B is this, this surface, and AB might, this minimal surface which connects AB might be relevant, but actually this area is larger. So as we know, that case, entanglement with just union of MA and MB, like this. And that case, mutual information between AB is vanished, and the entanglement wedge is disconnected. But however, if we look uh, at the case where A and B are connected, uh, sorry, A and B are very close to each other, in that case, there are some minimal surface which connect AB. This has a smaller area than this dotted one. So that case, entanglement wedge is like this region, even by this region, and this is gamma AB. Gamma is a minimal surface. And uh, so this case is the entanglement which are connected. And the mutual information is also non vanished This is a quite well known fact for entanglement. We're going to derive this theory from conformal field theory calculations later. OK, so and usually entanglement wedge is uh, explained by combining several ideas, like HK reconstruction. This actually corresponds to causal wedge, but there's some CFT dual of bulk local fields initially. And uh, also, this, uh, we, we can talk about the quantum correction, the holographic entanglement entropy, or uh, this is actually equivalent to, the cons to consider holographic relative entropy, if this is FLM construction, and also quantum error correcting code. It, it CFT is closely related to quantum error correcting code, and uh, this is helps us to understand reconstruction, entanglement with reconstruction, and this is usually how people understand entanglement with but these arguments are basically assumed ADS anti Doshita space time from the beginning, and they also use it hybrid ADS CFT dynamics. However, in this talk, we'd like to just start from conformal field theory without any thinking about the ADS CFT and derive some analog of entanglement wedge in purely in con uh, conformal field theory language. And then finally, we use ADS CFT to relate this wedge to entanglement, I mean entanglement wedge. So this is our logic. And our argument will clarify how entanglement wedges emerge from the reduced density matrix in conformal field series. And uh, the quantity we are looking at is very simple, always this one, this one, this low A. This reduced density matrix for some locally excited states. It's very has a very simple form. It's just uh, we start with from vacuum and we act local operator O, and we trace out region B. So we have we first start with as usual decompose space time into A a space into A and B, and uh, then we choose vacuum. We have vacuum and we just act a local operator at some point W. This point of W is very important. This is a kind of argument parameter of this reduced density matrix. We are interested in this dependence of W of this reduced density matrix. And W is X plus I tau. We are mainly focused on two-dimensional two conformal field theory. So some part of the result can be generalized to higher dimension. But anyway, so the W is a compressed coordinate, and it's uh, X and tau. Tau is a Euclidean time and X space dx. And this operator O is a primary field into the conformal field theory with a conformal dimension H. But here, a more, uh, uh, more heuristic picture why we consider this state. So this is a, a picture of ADS CFT. This is standard ADS CFT. And uh, so this is a boundary of ADS, and this is an extra dimension. This is a bulk ADS space time. And we point is that we talk about some locally excited state by O. So this is a vacuum. So if we, we don't have any operator insertion, this is a vacuum, but we insert some one operator. But we are talking about density matrix, it's like Bura and Ket. We have two O's, right? O and O Daga. O Daga is this one. Uh, o is this one, and O Daga is this one. Please think that way. And uh, we, once we have this two-point excitation, so we can think about, for example, two-point function by defined by just tracing this guy, right? Tracing of low A, just two-point function, O, O Daga. And that's, we know, in ADS safety, is dual to, uh, dual to this uh, geodesic and assuming that conformal dimension is much larger than one, but let's assume conformal dimension is much smaller than C. 
because uh, we don't want to take into account the back reactions. But anyway, this is related to this geodesic, and uh, it intersects some point at the time slice. We are focusing on time slice, which is same time as subsystem A is defined here. Uh, we are talking about uh, tracing out the region B outside of A, and we pick up low A like this. And the, this is the entanglement wedge from ADS CFT. And we expect that if this point P is inside uh, entanglement wedge, then we can probe the position of this P from the information of low A. But if we go like this green guy is outside of entanglement wedge, that case, that case we cannot probe this position from dense, reduced density matrix. And we claim this is a kind of CFT counterpart of entanglement wedge. We don't need to use ADS CFT. Just this is a, a set of which is just come from ADS CFT, but for real calculation, we just use CFT. And so it, this is a summary. So the low A may include information of this operator, blue operator, but not outside of this green operator. So this is what we want to basically calculate. So this is the contents of my talk. I just finished the introduction and go to the definition of information metric and uh, explain some basic example of single interval and double in, they go to double interval cases, which is more non-trivial, more disconnected and connected phase transition, and finally mention some HKLS cases. Okay, so let me start with the information metric. So to study the distinguishability, so we are talking about the location of excitation. So we have to, we want to distinguish the location which, which location is the, uh, this operator is inserted? We want to distinguish two different quantum states where excited points are different, so low and low prime. But in general, we, if we talk about distinguishability of quantum states of this two density matrix, low and low, low prime, we focus on this. Uh, we can look at some distance measure of two different states. One typical one is breast distance. These are the, one of the best. This is one of the best measure, which satisfies many nice properties. And this is defined by this, and this is basically low and low prime, and actually this is symmetric between low and low prime, and this part is called so-called fidelity. If low and low prime are the same, this is just one, fidelity is one, but if they are also going to be of course zero. So, and if we have this minus sign, two minus two times this quantity, then distance is called zero when low equals low prime. But the distance is larger when low and low primes are separate, different. And if we take the states of pure, pure state, then this is simplified, just overlap. This is inner problem. You can have some intuitive understanding from here. If this is the same, this is one, so it's just distance is zero. And uh, so next thing, we want to assume that density matrix actually depends on the parameter, lambda. So just uh, call this lambda, some multiple parameter. And then we define this distance between low lambda and low lambda plus d lambda. d lambda is an infinitesimally small, from small deviation. So we are talking about nearest, quite the nearest neighbor uh, states and measure the distance by this metric and expand by lambda i, d lambda i, infinitesimal coordinate. And this is, looks like metric. This is, a, of course, different of his invariant if we change the coordinate of these parameters. So this is called information metric. And we know there are no linear term because of the symmetries. Uh, so has a symmetry between we exchange, exchange row and row prime. So it start always start from quadratic order, and coefficient is a metric. And then there is a very nice theorem which is called quantum kramer lau theorem, which is a, a quite the basis of this uh, quantum estimation theory, and they are known for a long time. It's a kind of generalization of uncertainty principle. And uh, so if we take this, if we talk about the uh, this lambda estimate some estimation of lambda by some measurement, physical measurement, especially projection measurement or more generally POVM measurement. But nevertheless, we, we have some uh, error, quantum fluctuation, and this is measured by this this part, delta lambda square. This is just come from quantum region, quantum reason, and this is bounded by inverse of this breast metric. This is a very famous, a very established theorem. So that way, if we compute the breast metric, we can understand the, uh, this kind of errors. So, or in other words, resolutions. From the viewpoint of ADSFT, this is a kind of error when we want to try to identify the coordinate value of some local excitations. So this is quite important. 
So also from this uh, gravity interpretation. So the, I'm come to this uh, warm up example, which is a, a pure state in conformal fuel theory. So this is a simplest example. And uh, later we generalize this to reduced density matrix, which is very important. So let's consider local excited state just, just by this, just on top of the vacuum, we put some primary operator, same primary operator. This is very easy because we can easily compute uh, breast distance. This is just inner product because it's a pure state like this. And uh, so this is an inner product and it is a two, looks like two point function, right? And it's just two point function, so we know it's a universal answer. And then finally, this breast metric for this guy, it turns out to be hyperbolic metric. But the coefficient is H. H is a conformal dimension because this information metric is, of course, related to, uh, affected by a flow. And it's proportional to H. But anyway, this looks like proportional to the time slice metric of untitled digital space. So this is the first uh, point of how ADS space appears from this information metric. So we, here, of course, we only think about conformal fuel theory. But this is not so strange, I and mean, this is not surprising, because, so here, the setup, we have a two-point function, basically. It's a just local excited state, but we talk about the density matrix. And we are talking about, actually, pure state, and the distance between this excitation and this excitation. And if we think about the ADS CFT correspondence, this is much like you know distance between this point P in the bulk and the point P prime, like this distance. And this is exactly given by this hyperbolic metric because this is a time slice of anti digital space or hyperbolic space. And the coefficient, we don't know, but it's like, uh, of course, it's quite natural that if we use fine grain uh, probe, then we get a better result. So it should be somehow something like monotonic function of our dimension. It's quite sensible. But however, this is a bit too simple example uh, that the result is universal. So this result is actually formally true for even free field theory, free conformal field theory. But actually, we want to, of course, we know that ADSFT only true, so classical gravity dual is only true for strongly coupled large end gauges, large end theory, large central charge theory. So we need something more. So this motivates us to think about a more non-trivial guy, which is a memory, low A, reduced density matrix, where we will see this holographic nature is very, very, very important. Role. So the first, let's try first example, which is a single interval case. So this is just that we, we imagine a 2D conformal fuel theory, and the subsystem A is just defined by single interval case, most elementary example. And we talk about this reduced density matrix with local excitation. So this A is a 0 to L on R. At some time, T goes in. And we'd like to compute its breast metric, but let's try to first compute a easier quantity, which is something like Lenny version of breast distance, like this breast metric, like this. So uh, this is a Lenny version, so it's like, no, doesn't have a square root, that makes computation easy, but low row prime, just press low row prime, and uh, with normalization, square root of this kind. And this is, has a nice property that this is less than one, and it's uh, equal one only if this law equal law prime. This is first introduced by John Cardi in some study of recurrence. And uh, actually, breast metric is like this. It looks a little bit thin. Just power is different. So we're going to use this. And uh, so if i is one, that means we, we can say that law equal law prime. If i is smaller than one, we say law and law prime are different. So that, that, uh, that distinguishes the different states. And this here it's just a technical thing, but uh, so we can compute this low row prime like usual replicatoric, right? We pasting because we have two density matrix, low and low prime. We have two uh, Riemann surface and we paste with each other. And uh, such a pasting is given by this quadratic map. And uh, here is a sketch. This is a sketch. And we have this, uh, this is the interval, zero to L, zero to L. And uh, so this is a low and this is a low prime. And we, this uh, blue points, are green points are excited points. So we excite this point, low, O, o, o dagger, O, o dagger. And uh, we use this map to uh, paste these two guys uh, into one seat, right? So the first seat for low is mapped to this half seat here, half space here. And the second lines go to this guy, the other part. 
And if we insert this two operator here, then it goes to here. And here, the important point is this weight. Uh, we encounter some this 45 degree line, diagonal line, and this is actually mapped to this circle in W frame. And later, this is identified with entanglement weights. So anyway, by using this map, we can rely low low prime in terms of four point function on this final C, just single C, four point function with some uh, normalization with some common factor. And so in the end, finally, this I, low low prime, is given by ratio of this four point function. This is the main thing we are talking about. So four point function is not universal, so it really depends on the uh, theory, spectrum of the theory and so on. So we are working on this setup. And we are talking about this I low low prime in this, let's first start with holographic CFTs. So here we use some property of large central charge factorization, large and factorization, or so-called generalized free field precision. This is only true for holographic CFT. We, we have this four point function, O daga O, O daga O, and we somehow contract just ne nearest neighbor. This is a trivial weak contraction. And non-trivial one is uh, this blue guy. So you can see this picture, remember this picture. So this one seed, we just contract Z1 with Z2. This is a trivial. And Z3, this is a trivial with contraction. But if we contract Z2 with the other seed one, Z3, and like this way, this is a non-trivial one. So as we see for green case, outside of this wedge, this circle, this, this definitely trivial one is uh, preferred. This length is much closer. Two point function gets larger. But if I'm going beyond this wedge, this diagonal line, this blue guy, the inside circle, this D1, D2 is a little far apart. Actually, the other guy, non-trivial guy, non-trivial contraction is favored. So that way we have non-trivial with contraction. And it is very trivial to see I equal just one. This uh, ratio is just canceled out for trivial one. So for weak, trivial weak contraction, we just see that two operators are even though they are in that different location, they are actually the same, low and low. We cannot distinguish. But for non-trivial case, we can easily distinguish because I depend on the value of the uh, depend on the value of location of low low prime. So this is a quite essence of this calculation. And, and because in the end we want to compute this information metric. So information metric is compute defined by just nearest neighbor, very close state. Right? We take a infinitesimal small distance between them. So let's take the W is very close to W prime, and this makes the analysis very easy, much easier. And anyway, we have two possibilities, weak trivial weak contraction and non-trivial weak contraction. And the condition of this trivial weak contraction is like this, it's green, huh? it's favored in just this condition. This is just outside of the circle. Very easy to see that this guy is outside of the circle. And opposite also true for non-trivial weak contraction. Non trivial contraction. And the, uh, sorry. And the, so this is the inside of the circle. In this case, we have a, a situation that low A and low prime, low, low A W and W prime are distinguishable. And so this is a sketch of this, uh, how we see this CFT wedge and the entanglement wedge. So we are talking about this uh, blue and green one. Blue one, we can prove the position. So the, this distinguishability measure is non trivial. So, and this blue guy is, and we know this blue guy is inside this circle. And, but this circle is actually, we can understand this circle as a just projection, kind of shadow of this actual entanglement wedge anti logical space, because this is a geodesic line, right? Because this point just goes to this point by geodesic projection in Euclidean space, like this way. And outside this, uh, we cannot distinguish. So that way, this is the reason why I call this CFT wedge is a, a shadow of entanglement wedge. This itself is uh, uh, defined in purely in conformal field theory. And we can think about some Lorentz jump versions, this time evolution, but uh, these are very similar. So we can talk about real time evolution. Then we see this guy is inside the wedge, and the other guy has an outside wedge. And that way, we can follow also time evolution of this entanglement wedge. And we can compute this similar thing for free scalar, and that case we get this analytical results. This is a free scalar CFT. So no longer we have large n factorization. 
So we get a completely different result. This is a primary operator and the conformal dimension is just given by this. And here is a sketch, the plot of this eye. So this guy, these three guys with this red color, this guy are uh, holographic CFT calculation. Ah, sorry. And uh, the light guy, this, uh, this green, uh, green guy is a free scalar. So for example, so first we fix W, point of W is inside the wedge, inside the circle, and we put W prime as any position. So this vertical and the horizontal axis is the location of W prime, like this. Whenever this W prime coincides with this position, it suddenly goes to one, right? Because this state, uh, same state, low and low prime, same state at this point, that reason we have this delta function P. This is common, both holographic CFT and free scalar CFT. However, once this point is outside of the circle, this is outside of the entanglement wedge, so we cannot distinguish indeed. This is a sharp shadow, sharp wedge here, right? So this is always one because this point and this point is identified as the same point in holographic CFT because this is outside of entanglement wedge and suddenly goes to zero because uh, inside this wedge and outside the wedge we can distinguish. And right? just this is the functional done. And this is a really shadow of entanglement wedge. But if we look at the free scalar, it's like this very ambiguous. If, even this is very funny. But this is a real honest result. And that way, is, this entanglement wedge structure is only emerges in holographic CFT. This, you can clearly see, see that from this picture. And uh, so these are actually about something, any version of this distance measure. But we come to actual breast metric. This has a beta property. For that, we use replicatoric as usual. So we wanted to compute square root, but we don't know how to compute square root. So first compute for integer m and n and take analytical continuation to a n and m is one half, like this. And to evaluate this a n and m, uh, we consider the map. We consider this map. So this is just generalization previous map, not square map, it's a like z to k map. And then, so it looks like, so again, we end up with 2k point function, and we have a lot of uh, points here. So this is like a pizza-like shape, but it, we just come from this conformal map, right? So each sheet comes to this one slice of pizza, and we paste with each other to compute this to the nth power. And uh, this, this guy, this red guy is a low prime, and the blue guy is a low. They are periodically arranged. And green guys are trivial with contraction, and blue guys are again non trivial with contraction. And they, they are complete like before. And that, that way, so anyway, when trivial with contraction is a favor, then it's like this condition is exactly the same. It's outside of the same circle, and then this a distance is just trivial. I mean, trivial metric. In this case, it's, uh, uh, we cannot distinguish. There's two points, but non trivial with contraction, we get non trivial uh, distinguishability. This A is this one, basically fidelity. This fidelity is A half half. This fidelity is non-trivial. And we end up with this information metric, which is the same as pure state case, actually. So this is just hyperbolic space. So this is non-trivial. So this case, we can uh, distinguish two points. And this is a, this case is inside of this entanglement wedge. This is the inside of entanglement wedge. And uh, as, so this is sub, given by sub. So this is uh, essentially, the result is very parallel with this simplified measure, like which we call I over prime, this, this guy, something we, are, we discussed here. And anyway, so it is, and then we can generalize this result for more general uh, backgrounds, like black hole, uh, uh, CFT on cylinder and CFT on, CFT at final temperature. And in that case, we get global radius metric and global BGZ metric, with up to some factor h, this conformal dimension factor. So this works well. And it is also instructive to think about what happens for free scalar CFT. In this case, we have analytical com computation without any approximation. So this is the result for fidelity. Hi, uh, so can I ask a question? Yes? Uh, yeah. the actual Amsterdam. So I was wondering in your CFT computation, where did you actually need h being greater than 1? Like, did, uh, how does the geodesic approximation Hmm. necessitate itself in your CFT computation. Uh, sorry, uh, you, it's, uh, so geodesic approximation you're asking. Yeah. So we are assuming H is much larger than one. 
and much smaller than that. Well. Why did you need that in your? Ah, um, uh, yeah, because a uh, good point actually. So this result always have a H here, right? And yeah. then we want some sharp, sharp transition, sharp edge. That case, H should be very large. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, uh, this kind of picture is not not like this. This is we assume very large edge, so that's the reason we have very sharp edge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Otherwise, uh, something like this. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Whole question. And uh, so this is a, a free scalar, and this is a kind of fidelity, and this is a metric. Metric also looks funny because anyway, we don't expect this is agree with the hyper uh, ADS space time because this is a free scalar. But anyway, we can plot this like this. So if we this put it, put it, uh, this W is here and we change W prime, then we have a delta functional peak like before. But if it, uh, at this point goes to H, it's a little bit smeared. But even at this point, even though inside the wedge, it's already quite smeared. So that way, there are no sign of a clear entanglement wedge as we expect for free scale. So these are story of this uh, single interval case. This is very simple. But for double interval case, we have some, some non-trivial thing ongoing because we have a phase transition phenomena. And uh, we, we have also issue of this uh, causal wedge versus entanglement wedge. But we're going to see some clear answer to this question. And uh, so this case, we again, this is a familiar example of double interval. We A1 is 0 to S into the safety. And A2, I just wanted to parameterize this way. This uh, widow is S here, and widow is also S here. But the location, that they are separated by L. And uh, this double interval case, we have uh, two cuts like this. So we have two cuts. We, have a, we need a more complicated map given by this elliptic map. This is very classic result, this elliptic function given by this. And we have a moduli parameter, which is called kappa, or uh, equal J. They are related by this. J is a moduli, torus moduli. So why it told us up here? So we have this two cut geometry. We have two density matrix for this A1 and A2, this subsystem, and we have a cut here. And uh, we have low prime in a similar situation. And we paste low A1 with A1 and A2 with A this A2. So then we have torus because we have two boundaries. So we have two boundaries, this guy, this first one is mapped to this cylinder. And the second one map to the another scene that we paste to each other, so we get the torus. And torus has a moduli, which is given by J. And then this is just the expression given by this conformal map. So this is a conformal map, which map two seats into one torus. Anyway, we are working with this setup. And uh, as we know, there are two phases in the computation of entanglement entropy, also in the analysis of entanglement which namely connected phase and disconnected phase. I just explained also in the, in the beginning of this talk. And this, this guy is a connected phase. This guy is a connected phase on A and B, and the entanglement edge is supposed to be a connected like this. This is a CFD wedge, uh, which we are explain later. A1 is H. And if we, so this, uh, this is a case when J, this parameter J is small, smaller than pi. And if the opposite case, uh, sorry, the opposite case, we have this connected case. I didn't learn. It's just it's separated. And the connected case and this connected, they are just kind of talking phase transition. We know correlation function, two point function. He actually using ADS here. We, we know this correlation function and the largest approximation this given by sign for connected phase and disconnected phase change. It's like summer ADS and BTZ phase transition. We use this. And then, so again, for each phase, we have two possibilities, trivial weak contraction favored or non-trivial weak contraction favored. So just this condition, basically, sign, this two-point function sign, so which is larger, Z1, Z2 minus Z1, or Z3 minus Z2. This is the same story as single interval case, but the only difference is just we have sign here, or cinch here in this connected case. So anyway, in both cases, different parameter of this, this is, of course, this is a different parameter of situation of this interval, choice of double interval. So when they are far apart, we have a disconnected phase, and this interval is across each other, we have connected phase. But anyway, both cases, we can identify the non-trivial weak contraction as a case where non-trivial weak contraction favors, and that means we, we can distinguish two points. So the here, and this is a numerical result, because this is the elliptic map, we, 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 we don't have any analytical result. 
So this blue guy, blue one, this is a connected phase. And this result from this result of this no this non-trivial weak contraction favor. This blue region is a non-trivial weak contraction favor, white find the trivial one. So this looks like we for to understand this in terms of entanglement we just cut half, right? So we just project along geodesic, which is just 90 degree rotation. So this is agree with what we know for connected entanglement, which also disconnected case, it looks like just disconnected indeed. And this agree with, looks like circle, also this circle and small circle, it seems to be agree. But if we look very closely, this is the result, uh, but I, I should say this is a result from this uh, I low low prime, this rainy version of this distinguishable measure. So this is because we are talking about four-point function and they are assuming that we evaluate this. This is based on this I low low prime. In that case, we have a small deviation. If we look at look, we look, we magnify this region. This region and this region, this looks almost perfect circle, but it's not exactly circle. And uh, this yellow guy is actually entanglement, just pure, purely circle. But this blue guy, which obtained from this elliptic map, this uh, come from CFT wedge for this I low low prime, it's slightly few percent there is a deviation. There are few percent deviation. And the distinguishable analysis and this I low low prime, this reproduces this correct entanglement up this is a few percent error like this. This is something like this. Like this. Here and then this green guys are real entanglement wedge. And the red guys are just result CFT wedge for I low low prime. This lengthy version of this measure, distinguishable measure. I'm exaggerating this difference. It's but like this way. So it's always outside here. This should be because we are entanglement wedge and CFT wedge should be here. Just circle for single intervals already mentioned. Single interval is just, just they coincide. But for if we add A1, a little bit larger. And it's something opposite for uh, A, A1 union A2. And this wedge, uh, this for this uh, rainy measure satisfied like this form, this, uh, this uh, basic property, like if we have a larger, then wedge also larger. Right? So I just have a system for larger. This is kind of extensivity or entanglement wedge, like a uh, nesting like property. And uh, if we take a complement, then also which CFT wedge also becomes complement. So this, uh, this, this, even though they, they have some deviation, but they satisfy some necessary condition for to make sense. But uh, anyway, but why this uh, difference appears? So we expect actually these small deviation because we are talking about this measure instead of a truly uh, nice measure, which is namely breast distance. So this is a kind of von Neumann entropy. You can have think of this von Neumann, this is a linear. And we know some for two curricular linear entropy, you have a back reaction. The original geometry has some back reaction, something similar. And we can look at directly for this rest distance in this double interval setup by following a heuristic argument. So here we again remember this pizza like uh, setup, right? We have this, and each there are two points of O and O that are excited. And the, along this, uh, this slice line, we attach. One of the, uh, so here, let's go back. So what we, we attach A1 with this A1. This is something we, we, we do here. But we have also another A2, right? Another cut is just remained here. A2 is just hit, hit here. But we can paste later. But this A2 somehow disappear in the von Neumann limit. The switch disappears because in the end, we go back to just the original law. So we, we have a square root law. So Finally, n half n half limit just we have a power is just one. That means we just recover the original state, just low, low itself. The, so switch is just gone. So that way, this suggests that actually this effect is uh, uh, this doesn't affect at all because they are a little bit separated. And if uh, use this uh, uh, heuristic argument, we can just claim we can just find the result essentially given by the single interval case, and that we already know. So just precisely. We produce entanglement wedge. This just semicircle like this, even though we have an extra interval. So that way, for breast metric, we expect just to coincide, coincide uh, coinciding just with standard entanglement wedge, and also we have this kind of disc, uh, connected phase. So 
so th this definitely shows this causal weight it doesn't work here, and the entanglement should be free but from the CFT analysis also. And so, yeah, okay, so th these are a uh, story in double interval case. And uh, so we get us, uh, I mean, we, we can reproduce this standard results, what we expect for uh, entanglement weight. But however, but if we remember this uh, quantum Kramer Rao results, this is something I uh, introduced in the beginning. So we have, we can talk about this error to specify the location of this lo local operator. And this is directly related to the uh, resolution of this bulk space time. And our case, it's G, information metric always proportional to H, that means it's uh, like estimated one over H. Well, even though we take our H is very large, but actually we know, we expect from ADS-CFT, we can go much lower resolution, as a, a much higher resolution. So this means the resolution is one over H, but we expect some sub uh, Planck scale resolution. Uh, sorry, uh, Planck, uh, uh, I mean, sorry, Planck scale resolution, some, some scale which is a little bit larger than Planck scale. And the other one, the sub ADS scale should show up. So we naively expect something a little bit maybe larger than but one over C square. C is the temporal charge, and this is a Planck scale square, basically. Uh, this is just using ADSF. We something expect, but we get a much larger result. So probably we will be able to uh, fine grain our result or improve our result. So what we can do? So here it's a little bit speculative argument we are going to do. But for that, we are using some two-point function or some geodesic to localize some uh, bulk object. But actually, there are better uh, localized state, namely this HKLL state. So we know bulk local state is described by HKLL state. And here is the uh, state version, state version which we introduced uh, a little bit four years ago by these people, with these people. And uh, this is the sum, uh, but you can think this is just the uh, uh, state which you act HKL operator on back. This is ex exactly the same. So this is written this way. So, and this is a kind of a global H by state, global boundary state, only about SL2, not full Bilasoro. And this is a kind of time, of trans time translation. This state looks like cross cap state. And the point is that this, uh, this unitary transformation just moves the location. So originally, this state described the excitation as the center of global ADS, just center, origin. But we can change the location by acting a cellular transformation. But one more important point is that here we have this regularization. So we need a such a regularization like this form. Delta is a regularization parameter, and this is just Hamiltonian conformity, you say. We need this because this uh, summation, this Ishibashi state, as you know, like a boundary state or Cardi state, this norm is not well defined. We always need regularization because it's if it's sum over many states. So if we take a norm of this Ishibashi state, then it gets divergent. So we need a regularization. This is quite important. This is a difference from our primary operator case and this uh, HKK because we are summing over descendant state summing over descendant state. And then, in this setup, we previously compute breast metric, just assuming pure state, so given by this result. It's like, again, we reproduce this uh, hyperbolic space, but up to factor is a one over delta square. This, so this regularization plays very important role. So now we would like to interpret this as a, as in the context of our analysis. So from our analysis, we expect this breast metric this for reduced density matrix is same as that for a pure state. This psi alpha, this is something we define. Uh, sorry, like this. So if we, the point is inside the wedge, outside the wedge, we get a previous result, breast metric degenerate to zero. But inside the wedge, we expect the result even for density, reduced density matrix, same as pure state. So we expect, we, we get the same breast metric for each carrier state. For reduced tension matrix, and moreover, uh, since we are considering large C central charge, it's quite natural to identify this delta as a one over C because this is a Planck scale. And also, this C conformal dimension is much larger than C is uh, neglected in large C uh, conformal fuel cell. So this is just come from CFT also property. So we neglect a heavy state. 
So this is just this condition. And if we did assume this is a little bit speculative argument, but if we assume this, then we recover up to order one factor, this normal ADS metric up to correct factor of C square. C is a, uh, in the end, uh, also, this is equivalent to ADS radius square, right? Because uh, radius radius, and we set Newton constant one, so it's like the same as radius square. So this is a more, maybe a more, we expect this a more precise story of how this we can see the distinguishability of this bulk two point point points in this kind of analysis. And this agree, so if we remember this uh, this story of this Kremer Rao bound, so we have an inverse of this metric, so that is C square. This is really something we expect from uh, locality of classical gravity limit of anti state. Okay, so. Basically, these are all of my what I want to talk this time, and uh, here are some summary and some future uh, direction. So, in this talk, uh, we presented the approach just using breast metric to detect uh, entanglement wedge direct, directly from CFT. So here we don't use any gravity inputs except some correlators, and we find. And we found that this large C central charge property of this holographic CFT plays a crucial role for emergence of entanglement wedge. So generally, and uh, so we look at uh, the study CFT, but actually in the, my, our forthcoming paper, we also have a generalization to higher dimensional CFTs, also the case with boundaries and also some few doubles and so on. Also time dependent case. So, uh, everything works in a similar way. And the point is that we use some large central charge inputs, like factorization correlators, large central charge factorization. And also, uh, the, the, uh, so in our result, we perfectly reproduce entanglement for which for single interval. This works very well for this range like measure. But however, so if in our analysis, more, more non trivial example of double intervals, we have like non-trivial result that if we use this measure, high roll of prime, which looks like roll of prime, press roll of prime, we get something small deviation, even though result very similar to what we expect, and only a few percent, but it's anyway, deviates. On the other hand, if we use this uh, beta one, fidelity, then we, we get a precise match. And then uh, actually these two guys are, uh, and we actually in our forthcoming paper, actually we are studying uh, more other related measures also, and we have some simple rule. When, so this low, low prime has a factor two, a power two, because we, let's uh, identify low and low prime, same, low square, right? This is much like second range entropy. So power is two. But if we look at this uh, fidelity, so if you talk of square root, and if we identify low, low prime, low with low prime, this is power is just one, right? Because of this is quarter, quarter, and uh, this is half. So this, this power one and the power two is so different much like Lenny entropy and so on. So for, for this case, we expect, we just uh, uh, talk about some local operator O, we can act low, but this is just low, right? So that's much like standard observation, some o observables in quantum mechanics. It's just probe some, if we put O, low, low, low energy operator, this just probe low energy, called subspace. But here we are talking about low, low square. So low square, we can decode low times low, and we can regard one of low as a, some highly excited state. So in some sense, we are proving very highly excited state also, somehow as a background. So this is not, so the story is not just confined with cold subspace. I think this is the reason why we have some deviation, but definitely we need a more analysis later, but it's quite interesting point. So we have a different. So anyway, our uh, uh, lesson is that this, we, we should use definitely this measure, uh, fidelity or breast distance to have a sensible result. And here are some future directions. So we can think about some other information distances. So we actually, we quite exhaust many examples in our uh, this longer paper, but uh, so still missing ones, for example, Fisher metric or relative entropy, which are some different, so sort of different properties. So it's quite interesting to how we see entanglement wedge from relative entropy, or in other words, this is the same as quantum Fisher metric when we expand. Uh, this distance measure for uh, relative entropy. And it's quite interesting to also think about quantum correction, one of my correction, or maybe related to this quantum experimental surface, which also these days are discussing by many, many people. And also somehow we can see this uh, uh, metric, our information metric is kind of 
is a kind of measure of this two different uh, lengths uh, uh, separation of these two adjacent uh, geodesics. So it's much like some infinitesimal version of entanglement wedge cross section. There are now that there are many interesting proposals of this entanglement wedge cross section. This is we claim this is the EOP, entanglement purification, also negativity, since they are collaborators, and also entropy by Tamaoka. Uh, and the uh, reflected entropy by Adutta and Holocaust, and it's quite too interesting to think about the connection. And finally, I'd like to also uh, have a, maybe there are interesting connection to pass integral optimization where uh, this, uh, uh, sorry, this is Potsdam people also works for very interesting uh, complexity calculation, and also we work for this using real bit action. And uh, the reason is that, so we, here also we, we can somehow have some emergence. We, we observe some emergence of entanglement wedge and just from reduced density matrix and somehow this, uh, this mathematics uh, seem to be closely related. So we encounter also circle from this reduced density matrix, which is in semi-circle is the entanglement wedge and somehow I found some interesting similarity. And th these are basically so all of my talk and thank you very much for listening my uh, this uh, virtual seminar. Thank you, Tanashi. Okay, so we have time for, for questions. Hi, can you hear me? Um, oh, yeah. Yes, <clears throat> I wanted to ask about the, this Burris metric you defined, in, in general, it will be in a much higher dimensional, right? Space of state ah, is very high dimensional. And, you know, in these examples you did, you always had the right dimensionality to reproduce the bulk metric. Mm -hmm. Right? But then, in general, if you consider the whole class of states, or in the states with two primaries or whatever, you'll have a higher dimensional metric. Right? Uh -huh. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. How do you see that the, you have an idea how the ADS factor will emerge as part of this higher dimensional Burris metric for the states? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's very interesting uh, point that we can, in, in, in general, so here in, in my talk, we, we use this uh, location as a parameter of density matrix, but you can introduce other parameters. I think that's your higher dimensional, right, version of Burris metric. And uh, so we can introduce some, for example, deformation parameter of operator, exact minor perturbation, and also uh, relevant perturbation. We can introduce many parameters, for example. Or maybe we can introduce some metric modification of the manifold. But anyway, for previously, also we studied the case, we talk about breast metric for uh, marginal, marginal deformation. And for marginal deformation, even though we can think about infinitely many, uh, so many different marginal deformation, but the result is quite universal because uh, the uh, breast metric is uh, quite uh, universal because it ends up with a two point function if we talk about uh, pure state. And in that case, we find this uh, breast metric actually interpreted as a volume of uh, space time, actually, ADS space time. It's much like complexity proposal, volume called complexity proposal. But maybe also, you, it, it, as maybe you suggest, it's quite interesting to think about similar situation for reduced density matrix. In that case, I don't know the answer. And, uh, and we can talk about some deformation of Lagrangian by some marginal or relative perturbation and compute this low A and see this uh, information matrix. So I think it's probably quite interesting to look at. But uh, yeah, I, I cannot immediately uh, give some any speculation of this answer to that kind of calculation. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I, I didn't understand if the deviation that you saw for the three field theory is supposed oh. to go away by studying the viewer metric or is also a finite C? Uh, uh, ah, me, free, free theory, free, free case. Yes. Ah, free, uh, yeah, free case. Yeah, anyway, we, we don't have any holography, right? I mean, we don't know how to define which in the gravity side. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your question? So uh, what I didn't understand is it would become sharper if you would compute the viewer uh, uh, hmm. 
because it was is it it wasn't uh, the mutual information one right that you showed or not mutual information so what was the on the right side so you had two sides on the right side you had the three theory ah uh, you mean this one so are you talking about this one yes so ah, okay okay mm. it was and so this right side. side is a free theory calculation yes but and left side is a photographic cft calculation Exactly. My question would be if on the right side you would compute mm. the pure uh, rather than the mutual information, would you get a, a more defined uh, wedge or, or would you think it's still uh, blurred? Ah, sorry, you, you are talking mutual information. Ah, mutual information also don't show, uh, do not show any sharp uh, I mean phase transition because it's a finite C calculation. And the reason we have some phase transition in mutual information, sometimes zero and suddenly goes to non-zero, is only because of a large central charge effect, which is only true for holographic CFT. I see. Yeah, okay. also, yeah, we could see, uh, of course, sharp difference between holographic and the free theory in, in the context of mutual information. I see. Thanks. Further questions? Um, well, if not, then let's thank Tadashi again. Thank you.